Do you have what it takes to build a teardrop camper? Well, I'd say you do, and you may not even know it. Hey, welcome back to the channel, everyone. If this is your first time here, thanks for clicking on the video. And if you're a repeat watcher, welcome back. Um, I, if you're even remotely interested in building a teardrop camper, I am so glad you clicked on this video because there are so many resources that are available to you. Um, and, and I would think most of them you probably don't even know about. So I wanna talk about what those are and hopefully give you a head start on your own build. Let's get back to the workshop. So when you decide that you're going to have a YouTube channel, <laughs> one of the things that comes along with it is you're going to get comments of encouragement and comments of uh, reprimand, I guess you could say, or chastisement. And I was recently told that I shouldn't have built my Camp Easy 5945. Pretty much told it was a waste of time. I should have tucked that money and just went out and bought one of the teardrop campers in that price range and it saved me a whole lot of time. Um, and I appreciate even that comment. But here's the deal, if I would have done that, I wouldn't have my Camp Easy 5945. It wouldn't exist. I think it's just the coolest little camper. I love it. It's kind of like going to a Subway restaurant. You tell them to, uh, to put on the sandwich what you want them to put. And when you go back to eat it, if you don't like it, well, it's kind of on you. Well, I built that camper to my specs, uh, put the features in it that I wanted. And when I sleep in that thing at night, I love it. I, I built it with my own two hands. I can't tell you the satisfaction that I get out of having built my own camper. Now, is there anything wrong with buying a factory built teardrop? Absolutely not. Uh, some people just frankly don't have the time to build one. But if you do, I encourage you to think about it. Now, here's some more points. Oh yeah, did I mention that you only have to build one piece at a time? All right, so is there a better time to build a teardrop camper? Well, I don't know. I mean, you build it when you can build it. You look at what time you have, what resources are available to you, and then you start building one. But let me give you something to think about. Um, this video is gonna be released around the 1st of September. A lot of folks says it takes about six months to build a teardrop camper. If you just do the math, that takes you to March of the next year. Well, guess what happens in March? A lot of the campgrounds start reopening. Uh, spring is in March. People have had cabin fever all winter long. They're ready to get out and kick their heels up a little bit. How much better would it be to bring in spring than with a new teardrop camper? So, hey, you may want to get started now. You don't have to be a chain smoker to take a drag off a cigarette. You don't have to be an alcoholic to take a drink of whiskey. You don't have to be an arsonist to strike a match. And you don't have to be a teardrop factory just to build yourself one camper to enjoy on the weekends. The internet has changed the face of the way we do things. Um, I was telling somebody the other day, I can't even I can't even remember what it was like to not have the internet. I remember back in the day, you'd pull out an encyclopedia, and I guarantee you, there wasn't a method in there for how you build a teardrop camper an encyclopedia. But that leads me to my next point. You've got a bazillion resources at your disposal on how to build one. I'm gonna name off some of the top resources um, that I used in my own build, and I strongly encourage you to check out. The first one is there's a, a Facebook group, and I've mentioned this in a, in a previous post, um, the DIY Teardrop Campers Community. Um, it's just a Facebook group where, where DIY teardrop builders hang out. And when I say builders, I'm talking about people who are just starting their first build by drawing it out on graph paper, all the way up to folks that have built, you know, probably five or six of them. It's a very helpful group. Uh, people will ask questions. Folks will jump in there and give you answers. It's just like a big family. And they've even started having some get togethers. They had one in Michigan, I think, earlier this year. And I believe they're gonna have one down here in Tennessee next year. So it's just a really good group. Now there are a couple other groups to check out where Teardrop folks hang out. Uh, Teardrop Camper Group and the Teardrop Trailer Lovers. Um, but if you're looking into the, to the DIY scene, I would say the DIY Teardrop Campers community. Uh, I believe you have to make a request to join that. The, the administrator's Jay Poor, super good guy, and he's, <clears throat> gosh, I think he's built like four or five teardrops himself, so he's very experienced. Um, another website, and again, I've mentioned this before, is the TNTTT uh, website. That stands for Teardrops in Tiny Travel Trailers, and, and that's almost like an encyclopedia online of how you build a teardrop. There are uh, specific threads or discussion forums for 
gosh, wheel bearings for, you know, how you do fiberglass work for frames, just about anything you can imagine. Um, so there's just a super lot of, you know, online resources. Of course, you've got Camp and Camera, don't forget about this. And there's a lot of other good YouTube channels out there. But you have at your disposal so many more tools now than what folks have ever had. And listen, I'm gonna say it again. You don't have to be an expert at building the entire teardrop at one time. You only start with one piece at a time. So when you start your teardrop, let's talk about the frame. That's gonna be the first step. You gotta have a frame to build this bad boy on. Now there's a bunch of routes you can go. One popular route is a uh, Harbor Freight actually sells uh, like a bolt together kit. And I've seen a lot of folks build those. Now there's some mixed feelings about the quality of those kits. I think some folks will just bolt them together. They'll build a teardrop out of them and they're happy. Other folks will bolt it together and then they will weld the seams or have somebody weld the seams for them at a small cost just to help sturdy it up. Um, a lot of folks will end up putting like a larger tire, like maybe a 12 or 13 inch tire on those. Um, but there's a lot of resources on the internet on how you can modify if you decide you don't want to keep it like it is modify that to, to be a little bit heavier uh, built camper but those are available for i don't know five six hundred bucks now the route that i took is I had a local trailer manufacturer weld me up a frame to my custom specifications. And I wanted to do that because I had him build it out of two by three steel tubing with a full wrap tongue. And he put it on a 3,500 pound axle, uh, which enabled me to have uh, uh, brake mounts on there if I ever wanted to put brakes on there. And I do plan to do that. Matter of fact, I've got them over here in the background. Um, and believe it or not, it was about the price of a Harbor Freight trailer. So that's another option. Uh, remind me, did, did I happen to mention that you only have to build one piece at a time? So last night, I'm on the uh, DIY Teardrop Campers community, and I saw a couple folks. One was the, you know, the administrator uh, that did something a little bit different. Um, he took like a stock utility trailer frame, like a lawnmower trailer, left the side rails on it, and just built around it. I'd never seen that done before. So that's a pretty cool method. While I was on there, I also saw a guy had a... Um, I think it was a Toyota Sequoia frame from a, from a vehicle, and he was making a teardrop camper frame out of that. Now that's really thinking outside the box. Um, there was a guy took a, I don't know if it was like a hand-me-down pop-up camper or one that he picked up on Craigslist for three or 400 bucks. But anyway, he took a pop-up camper, basically just tore everything off the top of the frame and, you know, took like a, you know, a, an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel or something and just cut off the excess metal that he didn't want. Now, the cool thing is if you do that, that there's probably going to be some free parts that you could cabbage from that, uh, from that pop-up camper. Believe it or not, one of the roadblocks or obstacles that I've seen folks have is what shape should they build it? And they actually stress out over that quite a bit. Um, and admittedly, I did a little bit too. Sat down with some graph paper, just start doodling some, you know, some, some shapes, whether you want to build a, a traditional teardrop shape or a square drop, but just start playing like a kid. Just draw some shapes, draw some campers. And when you get one that you think works, you've got it on graph paper. It's easy to measure all the dimensions. Um, you can transfer that to a set of, you know, full size blueprints. Just do the math on that. Um, another thing you may want to do is build a scale model. This is a scale model of the Camp Easy 5945. I wanted to make sure it was gonna be a nice looking teardrop before I built it. So I took my blueprints, and I actually did mine on a computer, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, I took my blueprints, I scaled them down 10 times so that this camper is exactly one tenth the size of the real one. I'm talking width, height, length, and every dimension. Now I didn't put scale fenders on it because I didn't know I was going to put 32 Ford fenders on it at the time, but hey, I knew what the Camp Easy was going to look like before I ever started. How hard is it to build the walls? Um, building the walls, there's nothing to it. All you do is just trace your, your outline on there from your graph paper, just upscaled it, and just cut one of them out. And then lay it on top of the other one and trace the outline. That way you may have, you know, have a book match pair. Now, a lot of folks will actually you know, cut the second one a little heavy, and they'll use the first one as a router template to, to trim it out. You can do either one, probably gonna be fine either way. But building the walls is not that much work. And, and here's the deal. You only build them one time, and it's over with. You only build one piece at a time. 
Listen, man, I don't have time to build a teardrop camper. You had time to watch this video. I, I mean, I'm just saying. I've always been in the mindset that if you're gonna do something, you need to try to do it right. Now, that means do it to the best of your abilities. Everybody has a different amount of abilities. But now listen, you're not building an artificial heart. You're not building a kidney dialysis machine. You know, there's not somebody sitting there waiting for an insulin injection. It's just a teardrop camper. It's a box on wheels. Don't get too hung up on this thing. Don't get too stressed out about it. You know, what if, what if your cabinet door doesn't open and close right? You know, what if your water doesn't flow as freely in the sink if, if you put one in there? It's just a camper. It's going to be okay. I think I've lost my, is there still sun on me? It's gone, ain't it? There's a lot of good resources on the internet from several, uh, oh man, did you hear that? Dang it, man. And Zap's over here wallowing around on me now too. What is I got Noah's Ark out here? Hey, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, click that button and like if you like this. Uh, GoPro, stop recording. Build a teardrop camper, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Yeah. I haven't seen anybody in all the Facebook posts and the other forums that I searched that's made a camper 62 inches wide. <clears throat> okay, we have a situation. We found that this hot wire uh, was trying to come loose out of the uh, termination. So. It You only build one piece at a time. I have lots of folks ask me, hey, where'd you buy the trim for your camper? Where'd you get your doors? Just all kinds of questions about where I source the parts. And I'm gonna share that with you. These are all the ones that I could think of off the top of my head. I'm gonna read these off my phone here. Um, Amazon, certainly. I mean, everybody orders from Amazon. And yes, I am an Amazon affiliate. I do have a link below. You can shop through there. I do make a little commission off that. No cost to you. Um, Facebook Marketplace, you know, that's that's still a relatively new outlet, but you can find used campers, uh, to, you know, to tear down, camper frame. Hey, matter of fact, used campers to tear down. I've been seeing a lot of partially built teardrops on Facebook Marketplace lately. That may be a spot you can find one that somebody, you know, has taken a frame, put a box on, and you can take it from there. That'd be a real good head start. Uh, Craigslist, Go LSN, Let Go. So those are all kind of the flea market sites, except for Amazon. Um, E-Trailer, lot of, lot of trailer parts at E-Trailer. Now here's one that I never hear anybody talk about that I bought, um, I bought my two burner propane cooktop from, and I think I even bought my uh, Max Air vent fan from. It's a place called RV Upgrade Store. Their prices are really good and good shipping you know good service now i'm not affiliated with any of these except for the amazon by the way um, <clears throat> vintage technologies they sell a lot of uh, trim now the trim's expensive anywhere you get it and shipping's expensive but even still i bought my trim from them and um, the the trim pro 635 cock the butyl tape and the stainless steel screw seem like i did better there than anywhere else um, socal teardrops i bought an item or two from them Albany County fasteners. Now, 
I am super impressed with this company. Again, no affiliation, but I was looking for some specialty hardware, some stuff that was really hard to find. And like every time I looked, Albany County Fasteners, they had what I needed. And you wouldn't believe how they have everything packaged and shipped to you. It's really, really top notch. Now it's not super cheap, but if you got something that's hard to find, you could probably find it there. Um, for cabinet hardware, there is a company called D, like the letter D, Lawless Hardware. D Lawless Hardware, great place for cabinet hardware. Obviously I got some stuff at, at Lowe's and Home Depot. Found some things at like a salvage store, you know, like a building surplus or salvage store around. Uh, yard sales, flea markets. But there's a ton of places out there that you can shop from. eBay, a lot, a lot of stuff from eBay. Now listen, on eBay, you know, there are some really good sellers out there and there are some guys that, quite frankly, they'd steal the crack out of your britches if they could. So what I have found that works well for me is that if the seller that, that's selling the product has a seller rating that's at least like a 99.7 or 99.8, they're gonna be a pretty good seller. I've not really had any issues with them. But it seems like when you get down around the 99 and a half and below uh, seller rating, I don't know, it's kind of luck of the draw. But if you do it right, eBay is a good way to do it. I go down to the Dollar General store. I just buy an eBay gift card. You can put like a, up to 200 bucks on it. There's no tax. And I just type the code into eBay, easy peasy. I'm gonna share with you one of the most important tips of the day. Seltzer water. This is the nectar of life here. Kroger seltzer water. Love this stuff. You gotta be kidding me. The guy just stops in the middle of talking to go get seltzer water? Who does that? So I'll let you in on something. The Camp Easy 5945 that I built, it was like the butt ugliest thing I had ever seen before I put the aluminum on it. Uh, the plywood that I built it out of, I had spliced it, it was different colors. And I thought, man, I don't know if I've done this, you know, right or not. But when I put that aluminum on the outside of it, it was, I mean, it was just a game changer. It looked like a whole different camper. So what reason I'm telling you that, you can cover up a bunch of mistakes when you put your aluminum on the outside or your file on, or if you're just gonna paint it. I mean, your exterior covering, you can cover a lot of mistakes. So don't worry about that. Oh yeah, Harbor Freight. How could I get Harbor Freight? Um, now be honest with you, it used to be I wouldn't shop at Harbor Freight because their tools were just, well, they were junk in my opinion, but they've come a long way. I mean, I'm not saying they're the best quality, but they're still a lot better than they were. And you know, if you're not gonna be using these tools to make a living, if you just need them for this one project, you can get some stuff pretty cheap at Harbor Freight. Um, you know, I saw like little, the little uh, handheld angle grinders that you put cut off wheels on. I saw those for like 10 bucks, um, a pneumatic nailer for like 15. Now, is it gonna last forever? Probably not, but it should be good enough for your teardrop. Guess what? You only build one piece at a time. So if you take your teardrop on a long trip and it breaks down and you're the one that built it, guess what? You should be able to work on it. So what if you don't have the money to build a fully equipped teardrop? Well, don't build a fully equipped teardrop. Just build a box on, uh, on a frame with some lights on the outside of it, throw your mattress in there and go. If uh, you know if you get the money down the road, you can always add stuff to it. Uh, you can add electrical to it. You can add water. You can you know, whatever you want. But there's no better time than the present to get started on this thing. Can anybody guess what I'm getting ready to say? That's right. You said it. So at the first of the episode, I mentioned that I had been getting a lot of comments from people about you know where they had what it took to build a teardrop. You know they're kind of wondering. But at the same time, I've also had a lot of comments lately about, they said, hey, they've watched my videos um, on YouTube and it's kind of inspired them to build their own camper. I can't tell you how much that means to me and how much I appreciate that. And hopefully those of you that are still on the fence, some of the things that I shared with you will be you know, some, some answers to your questions to help you get started. If you're still unsure, Again, there's tons of resources. Get on the DIY Teardrop Campers community. Go to the Teardrop Camper Group, Teardrop Trailer Lovers, you know, w.tntt.com and get on there, hang out, get to know some folks, and you'll find that you're not alone. There's going to be a lot of other newbies. Um, 
there's a lot of old timers out there that are going to share tips and, and, and hints with you. you. You are going to be so successful at this if you just break it into one piece at a time. So listen, thanks for watching this episode. If you want to come back, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you like this one. It really helps. And until next time, take care. We'll see you on the road.